Hi readers and happy Friday. Today we are going to be learning about one more awesome text feature in expository nonfiction and it is called the index. And I also am really excited about the book we're going to be reading today because we are about ready to start getting some rain again. We've been having lots of sunshine, but we're about ready to start getting some rain again. And something that I think is really cool about rain is we always get lots and lots of worms that we can see outside. Has anybody else ever noticed that before? Whenever it first starts to rain, the worms come up to the surface and we see worms all over. So I wanted to read a book about worms to you today. And I also wanna think about the index and what we use the index for. So we are going to set up our page, make sure you have your reader's notebook ready. And we are going to turn to our next blank page. And as always, we're gonna admire all the awesome sketch noting that we've done along the way. We have looked at Sketch noting baby animals in the city. We've made a web. We've looked, we've done a picture walk. We've looked at headings. We've looked at the table of contents. We've looked at, see, sometimes I make mistakes too, and that's okay. I just move on to the next page. We've looked at labels and captions. We've looked at vocabulary yesterday. And with that, we looked at bold words in the glossary. And today on our new page, we are going to be learning about the index. Have you heard that word before? Take a second and think of if you've heard of the index before. Have you seen one before? Do you know where it is in a book? By this time, we've looked at lots of books in our flora and fauna collection. So maybe you have already seen an index and you already know what it looks like and you can picture it in your head. And our book title today is called Worms Are Gross. We're gonna write that at the top and we are gonna underline it because it is the name of a book. So make sure you have your page set up and all ready to go. I'm gonna share my screen with the book with you. All right, here is our book, Worms Are Gross. And it says, earthworms are greasy and gross, but they play an important part in our ecosystem. So before we read the book, we're gonna do this a little bit backwards. Before we read the book, we're going to go to the end of the book because that is where we find the index. There's our friend, the glossary we learned about yesterday. Take a second, remember what we use the glossary for. What we use the glossary for. Remember that the glossary we wrote tells the reader what important words mean. Well, today we're gonna to look at the index. And just like we did when we looked at other parts of the book, I want you to take a second to look at the index right here. Look at the index and think about what you notice and what you wonder. And remember before, whenever we were thinking about this, we did a sketch note about it so that we could see what we were seeing and start drawing it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch note what I see here. So I see that it's got index and in big bold words at the top. So that tells us that it is important. So I wrote index in big bold words and then I see that it's got like a letter like this, like B. And then it says body. And then it's got a bunch of numbers after it. And then on the other side, I see it's got an F like this. And the B is bold. Does anyone else notice that before I fix that in mind? The B is bold and the F is bold. And under the F, it says food. And it's got some more numbers. So it looks kind of like that. I'm gonna add another one in on both sides because I see that there's more than one word under the letter B. This one also says burrows and then has some page numbers. And then under the F, it's got another word too. It's got food chains with some more numbers. So take a second and think about what do you notice? What do you wonder? Do you have a prediction about what we will use the index for? Have you ever used an index yourself? So add, take a second, add your sketch note, pause the video if you want to, um, and add on to your sketch note about the index. What do you think the index is for? So while we have our, picture, our sketch note of the index drawn, 
I am going to go back and read the book. And while I read it, I want you to look for some of these words. So we're gonna read them together, all of the words that we see on the index, and we're gonna see if we can figure out what this index is for while we read the book. So we've got body, burrows, circulatory system, compost, digestive system, earthworms, I see that has a lot of numbers by it, food, food chains, groups, mucus, nervous system, night crawler, nutrients, parasites, parts, plants, red wigglers, regeneration, segments, soil, species, and tubes. Whoa, some of those words were pretty tough, huh? I wanna show you that something cool that you can do with Epic is if you find one that's hard to say, like which one was a hard one to say? Regeneration, that's a tough Regeneration. one. Regeneration. You can have Epic if you just push the word whenever it gets highlighted like that. You can have Epic. Regeneration read it to you and tell you what it means. And that was something that we talked about yesterday whenever we were talking about words that came up. I just wanted to show you how to do that. All right, so now we're gonna go through and read our book and we're gonna see if we can figure out what this index is for and if we can write down a big idea for what the index is for. Let's go ahead and get started. Wiggly worms is our heading for the first page. If you have ever seen a worm wiggling on the sidewalk after a rainstorm, just like what we were talking about, we already have a connection to the book. It was likely an earthworm. Earthworms may look like soft, slimy tubes, but they are an important link in the food chain. Hmm, food chain. I noticed that that's one of the words that we wrote down on our index sketch note. See if we can figure out, just like the table of contents, Maybe we can make a connection to the table of contents and we see that the word food chain is here and we have the page number, page four down here. So food chain that we wrote down is on page four. Is that helping you figure out what the job of the index might be? They keep the soil healthy so that plants can grow. Earthworms are also food for other animals. Did you know that if a part of an earthworm gets cut off, the lost part can sometimes grow back? This is called regeneration. Remember that other pit, that other word that we had Epic read to us? Regeneration from the index? Let's see if our hypothesis is correct. We were, I was thinking that the index tells us where we can find these words in the book, just like food chain. It told us we would find food chain on page four, and we did. Let's see if it tells us we can also find regeneration on page four. Let's go back to our index and check where's our word regeneration right there. And look at that, it is on page four. Are you starting to form a big idea about what the index is about? Let's see, let's keep reading and keep thinking about that idea. I'm gonna go back to our page. I know it's page four and keep reading. Earthworms feel slimy and wet. Some people think they are too gross to touch. Do you think that? I like to touch earthworms. Did you know that in one acre of land, you might find more than 1 million earthworms in the ground? Whoa, that might be a fact that I would write on my other sketch note page, some facts about earthworms right here. So do that as I read too. We're just gonna be using this page today. So you can do this page to just sketch note on your own. There are many gross animals called worms, but not all these worms are closely related to earthworms. Many of these other worms are parasites or animals that live in, on, or with another living thing. However, earthworms live on their own. Segmented worms. Earthworms belong to a group of animals called annelids. Annelids are known as segmented worms. Look closely at the earthworm's body and you will see rings going around its tube-like body. Each of these rings is a segment. An earthworm's body has a nervous system, a digestive system, and a circulatory system. So those words are all bold. And I'm remembering, is anyone else remembering that those were words in our index? Let's see if those words are in our index and it says that they're on page six. Go back to our index. Remember it's in the back of the book. So I remember that one of the words was circulatory system and it's on page six. And I also remember nervous system and it was on page six. 
So yes, our prediction was correct. I think we have an idea about what the big idea of this book, of the index is. So go ahead and write that. I'm gonna write big idea at the bottom of my page. And I'm gonna write what the big idea of the index is right down here. So you can write it in your own words. What is the job of the index? What's the job of the index? We're writing the job of the index. So what I wrote right there, the big idea that I thought from the index was that, let me stop sharing so that you can see it a little bit bigger for a second. The big idea that I wrote is that the index tells us where we find important words in the book. Is that what you thought too? Because we can go to the index to find like the bold words and it'll tell us what page number we can find them on. Another way that I used an index recently is I was reading a book um, about cats and there was some really cute pictures of kittens in it. And I was like, I wonder if there's a way that I can just find all of the pictures of the kittens in the book and all of the pages where it talks about kittens. So I looked in the index under K for kittens and it told me all the pages that I could find pictures of kittens. Isn't that pretty cool? Aren't our expository books so helpful? Okay, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen and we're gonna finish the book. While we finish the book, your index page is complete, but while we finish the book, I'd like to see you sketch note anything, any cool or surprising facts that you learn on this side of the page. This is a close up photograph of an earthworm's body. Here, you can see its segments. You can see some of the earthworm's insides through its skin. Do you see that? Um, so it's this it looks like the sentence continues here. And an earthworm's body has a nervous system, a digestive system, and a circulatory system, which pumps blood. These body systems are found in people too, but they are much more complex in people than in earthworms. How does an earthworm move? Each segment has two pairs of hair-like parts called setae. The setae hold on to the ground as the earthworm uses its muscles to make a wave-like movement that goes from the back of its body forward. So can you make your hand, can you think about how to make your arm move like an earthworm? So each segment has hairs they go like this and then they pull it forward. So whenever it moves, it goes like this because all of its body parts are moving it forward like this. That's a lot of worms. There are more than 4,000 species of earthworms in the world. Is that something you maybe would wanna sketch now? Scientists divide these species into three groups based on where in the soil they live. A pig, Ooh, I'm not sure how to say this word. Let's see if we can get Epic to help us. Oh, I guess it's not gonna help us either because this is a word that's specific to worms and it's gonna tell us how, so it's not gonna tell us how to say it, I guess. I think it's epigic worms, such as the red wiggler live among plant litter or dead plant matter in shallow loose soil. This is the kind of worm often found in backyards. Endogeic worms build horizontal branching burrows. They do not often come up to the surface. Anetic worms, such as night crawlers, build deep vertical burrows and come up to the surface to feed. Anetic worms coat their burrows with mucus. This slimy stuff helps keep the burrow from falling in. This photo shows an earthworm pulling a leaf down into a vertical burrow. See what's pulling down? That might be a super cool sketch note to draw. Okay. Worm habitats. Earthworms live all over the world. Their habitats range from just above the ground to many feet under the ground, depending on which species of worm it is. 
Epegic worms live in wet, shallow soil and among rotting plant matter on the ground. Endogeic and anetic worms live in burrows that they dig in the ground. Anetic worms dig the deepest burrows. They often dig about six feet under the ground. Here, here's our caption. Here, an earthworm moves among wet, fallen tree leaves. The earthworm is burrowing in soil. It can breathe underground as long as the soil is not too wet. Earthworms' bodies dry out quickly when they are away from their wet homes. When there is a heavy rain, however, the soil gets too wet for worms. They breathe air and the wet soil can drown worms. This forces them to leave their burrows to keep from drowning. All right, awesome readers. We did a great job today learning. I learned so much about worms from that book. And there's even a word that I want to look up how to say after we're done, after we're done here, because I don't even know what that, how to say that word. And I want to do more research because I was so excited to learn about the worms. So today you have a fun job that's going to test all of your knowledge about the text features in expository nonfiction. Today, your job is going to be to do a scavenger hunt where you go in your books and you look for the different text features that we learned about. So you're gonna look for a book with a glossary, a book with a table of contents, a book with bold words, all the different things that we've been learning about. You are going to look for those in your books in your Oregon Flora and Fauna book collection. So you're gonna look for those text features. And we're gonna have a fun scavenger hunt. So great job today. And I can't wait to see your scavenger hunt. Good job readers.